So it's been about a week uh, since we plowed and it's been it's been pretty dry. I think it's only rained one time since then and not a lot. And uh, so that's good. So this, uh, all the sod we flipped over appears to have dried down pretty well. Uh, you know, the piles are pretty, they look like they're gonna break up pretty good. Uh, we're supposed to have some pretty heavy thunderstorms and rain tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to uh, get it disc down a little bit, start breaking up some of the sod, getting the field to, you know, lay level. Uh, the last time this was plowed, it was pretty, pretty rough. This field's always been pretty rough, but uh, it probably doesn't really reflect much in the, in the picture here, but uh, it's a lot of clay mixed in here. Um, so I want to start getting it uh, kind of busted up here and uh, flattened down so we can get this field planted here shortly. I think that's pretty well gonna do it for this field uh, for tonight anyways getting certain get late I'm getting hungry uh, and I think we've got it knocked down pretty well I've seen seen better seen worse uh, but it's usually my habit uh, after plowing uh, particularly sod ground like this that what I've done is I usually will disc you know with uh, the furrow pretty much the same way you know that you that you plowed it and then across and then I'll kitty corner you know both sides of the fields are pretty much with it across and then you know make an X and that usually beats it down pretty good this stuff is super super rocky um, you know I made a few mistakes I left huge you know I, we plowed it just one way because the field's so small and then you know when I made my last pass up there with the plow uh, I should have set it about you know half as deep as I was and you know not left such a huge you know dead furrow but Hindsight's always 2020, and the same thing here by the trees. You know, when I was flipping the sod up uh, without a furrow for it to flip into, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have cut so deep, but can't change it now. So <laughs> I'm sure uh, gravity will help and uh, bring it down. And and I just want to get it knocked down a little bit before we got the rain. Um, I might come out with a cultipacker, uh, you know, disc it up a little bit, and then cultipack it to get a good firm seed bed. And then we'll broadcast our seed, and then we'll disc that under, and then call it to pack it again, and should be good. Cross your fingers, hope it grows.
uh, we get a chance to get back on the on the field again. I uh, picked up some fertilizer today, got about 450 pounds of triple 15. So we'll put about um, you know 150 pounds on that upper field, and we'll do about 300 pounds on that lower field, and that should be good. That should give our our planting a good jump. Um, here's what we're going to be putting in the upper field. It's a product called Red Zone. It's made by Antler King. Um, this here is what, well, according to the bag, it has uh, forged soybeans, forged peas, buckwheat, and more. Um, I have used this product before. I actually used this last year uh, on, a, on a different property, on a property that we leased that I uh, uh, planted. The stuff grew extremely well. The deer were, you know, highly interested in it. And it was pretty neat. Um, the buckwheat grew and up where uh, where I lease, um, I actually lease some property from one of the very few buckwheat farmers in the area and it's always been my experience that uh, the deer around here will absolutely destroy buckwheat. Um, at one point I put in two acres of buckwheat, they ate it all. Uh, they ate it right to the ground to the point there was nothing but just green sticks. You know, As soon as it came to a head, the deer just ate it, they demolished it. Um, and they did the same. They did the same thing with this here. Uh, but what was neat about this is it had those uh, forage peas in there, or cow peas, or whatever you want to call them. And once the deer ate the buckwheat, the peas continued to grow and cling on to the buckwheat stalks, which are really thick. Um, I don't know if you ever seen buckwheat or not, but the the stalk they're very stocky and very stiff stalks, and they can grow quite high on fertile soil. And the peas grew up those, and the peas were hanging off, and then the deer ate the peas. So it was a really good combination. So I got that. Um, I also got just a, uh, a little bag here of of cow peas, or you know field peas, I guess you know they'll call them field peas, uh, to subsidize this bag a little bit. I want to make sure that there's that there's plenty in there. So uh, that's what's going on in the upper field. In the lower field, in the bigger field, the one we just uh, missed. Uh, we're going to be putting in some mean bean uh, buck on a bag. Uh, guarantees that you will shoot big monster bucks. <laughs> what, you don't believe me? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, it's a total lie. Um, <laughs> but uh, this contains, uh, you know, again, uh, soybeans, lab lab, and cow peas. Um, so this particular product I have not grown uh, before. Um, I have, however, grown just straight soybeans uh, using this method where I just broadcast them, press them in with a cult packer and have had good success. Um, so hopefully uh, hopefully these work just as well. Uh, like I say, it is a little bit of a variety, a little bit of a mix. Um, of course they don't tell you, you know, everything that's in it. Well yeah, I guess, I guess this one actually has uh, a label on it. So soybeans, lab lab, cow peas, ebony cow peas, inert matter, 0.2% weed seed and that's pretty much it other crop seed it says so uh, being that there's different different size seeds uh, stuff like that you know I find that broadcasting uh, works the best uh, to, to put these in uh, we do have a drill but like I say with all the different size seeds and I know in like that red zone for example uh, that there is um, uh, what did they have in there? Some sunflowers were growing. There's quite a bit of quite a bit of different types of foliage that grew in all different size seeds. So we'll just broadcast those. These fields are pretty small. They're easy enough to walk. I've got an old, uh, you know, hand crank uh, broadcast spreader. So that's what's going on there. And I've got one other uh, bag here. I'll show you. And one other food plot that uh, you guys haven't been on yet. It's just um, it's right on the edge of our property. It's actually a power line that runs through there. Uh, which they're supposed to be up cutting out, uh, so I I haven't even gone down there. I haven't plowed it or anything because uh, they left us a door knocker on our cabin saying that they're going to be coming through and uh, you know cutting it out ten feet on either side of the power line, uh, and it's extremely extremely overgrown. I mean, there's trees down there bigger than the power poles, uh, so I've been kind of waiting for those guys to come through um, before I do anything with that, but because uh, I'd hate to you know plow it up and plant it and then have them come through and you know have to do their job uh, but uh, basically we just got um, you know a clover mix uh, so it's basically just clover and chicory which and you know also guarantees you huge bucks uh, that's that's a complete lie um, so this includes uh, insight ladino clover a couple other types of ladino clover uh, alex 
bursine clover and wintery chicory. Um, only about a 12% uh, chicory mix in this. And I have found up here that the deer will absolutely pound chicory. Um, so I got a small bag, uh, what, quarter pound here, no, one pound, of uh, just straight chicory to subsidize the clover with. Uh, as a matter of fact, the fields that we plowed under over there, they used to be clover and chicory, and it'll come back, if, you know, even if you don't frost seed it every year. I mean, it'll come back for, you know, strong for a good two, three years anyways. And I always found that the deer, when they're out there eating, they always ate the chicory first. So, uh, and this will grow uh, in a in a shaded area, uh, you know, from my understanding, you know, or, where we only get, you know, 60% light throughout the day. And that's the way that power line is. Uh, so that's why I chose that for there. And uh, I've had good success, you know, hunting down there. Uh, the deer like it. It's, it's a small area, um, you know, or small opening. So they have cover on both sides. Uh, so they don't really have to be, you know, exposed. I typically don't hunt on my food plots. You know, uh, typically I'll hunt deer going to or go, coming from uh, the food plot area. Uh, simply because, in my experience, uh, from what we've seen in our areas, is that, you know, the deer won't be, you know, on the food within legal shooting limits. Uh, but typically they're traveling to it or they're just kind of hanging out on the edge or, you know, um, if there are does out there, depending on the wind, you know, what way the bucks will come in to, you know, kind of wind them and check the field, stuff like that. So, got to kind of play it all, uh, you know, play it all by ear and, and see what we see. Uh, but that's what's going in the fields in case you guys are wondering and I'm sure we'll be uh, making a video out of that So stay tuned and thanks for watching I think that's pretty well gonna do it for this field uh, for tonight anyways uh, I'd like to uh, get it disc down a little bit start breaking up some of the sod getting the field to you know lay level uh, the last time this was plowed it was pretty pretty rough this field's always been pretty rough but uh, it probably doesn't really reflect much in the in the picture here but uh, it's a lot of clay mixed in here um, so I want to start getting it uh, kind of busted up here and uh, flatten down so we can get this field planted here shortly. get late I'm getting hungry uh, and I think we've got it knocked down pretty well I've seen seen better seen worse uh, but it's usually my habit uh, after plowing uh, particularly sod ground like this that what I've done is I usually will disc you know with uh, the furrow pretty much the same way you know that you that you plowed it and then across and then I'll kitty corner you know both sides of the fields are pretty much with it across and then you know make an X and that usually beats it down pretty good this stuff is super super rocky um, you know I made a few mistakes I left huge you know I, we plowed it just one way because the field's so small and then you know when I made my last pass up there with the plow uh, I should have set it about you know half as deep as I was and you know not left such a huge you know dead furrow but Hindsight's always 2020, and the same thing here by the trees, you know.
it's been about a week uh, since we plowed and it's been it's been pretty dry I think it's only rained one time since then and not a lot and uh, so that's good so this uh, all the sod we flipped over appears to have dried down pretty well uh, you know the piles are pretty they look like they're gonna break up pretty good uh, we're supposed to have some pretty heavy thunderstorms and rain tomorrow